Hi, my name's Barbara Gray from Clarity Stamp here in the UK and welcome to YouTube Tuesday. Today I'd like to get in the groove with our parchment system and since Christmas is almost upon us it might be a good idea to make a present. Uh, I thought I'd show you how to make a bookmark. And uh, so what we're going to use is the Groovy Plate Mate and the border number one and also the sprig. And I think we'll just get started. So I've taken a piece of parchment and you can see here I've cut it in half. So there we go. I've cut it in half. And um, the first thing I want to do is uh, make a border. So the first thing that I need is to attach this border to this edge here. I think, first of all, we'll start by taking a piece of sellotape and just attaching it. And the idea is to just attach it at the top and at the bottom so that I can see, I can see through here. I want to go four across, you see. We're going to cut the whole thing out in a minute anyway. Perhaps if I show you where we're headed, you'll get a better idea. You see, what I want to do is do four scallops here and then 18 down here, another four up there and 18 up there. So that's where we're headed. And what I'm going to do is actually use these, um, these other marks on the, uh, on the border as my, as my soldiers or as my guide so I can see that it's going to be straight. Even if it's not 100% straight, that's okay because actually we're going to cut the whole thing out. Next thing I want to do is take a, uh, a tumble dryer sheet and just wipe the parchment. What this will do is it will help the, the, um, the embossing tool to glide the, the stylus. And then I'm just going to start here in the middle and I'm going to go one, two, three and four. And I'm using the the finest edge. We've got one and two if you like and I'm using the finest edge. You can also go in with number two, same sketch. And then all I'm going to do then is just lift this up gently and turn it round and put the next side in. So again here, and this is, this is all I want to show you really, is it's important to just line it up like so, see, and I'll attach it there and then we'll get this corner and then we'll go along there and I'm just going to count 18 this way, 18 there and four up that side. So why don't we listen to some nice music while I get in the groove. Okay, so you can see now I've gone all the way around and, uh, and now the next thing is to add the frame on the inside. It's a lot easier to do it this way around. So let's just check this out. If you're wondering why I've, um, I've counted exactly, it's because we're going to use bookmark pouches and all I've done is literally measured exactly so that when I, when I use my bookmark pouch, this will sit in there perfectly. Just so you understand the logic behind this, there is a, a method in my madness. So now I'm just going to put a, a frame on the inside and I'm using, you see on this border again, great border actually, see this border here, it's got this straight line, brilliant for scoring but also really good for making um, a straight edge like a frame. So if you look here for example now, again I just want to mask this, so I'll show you and we're going to go just straight across like that and then dot to dot there. So I've gone to there and I'm just going to do the same thing on the inside here. Now I've got choices. If I want to, I can get in really tight and I can actually close up all these halves or I can leave an opening. I, I, you know, either way, whichever, whatever rocks your boat. So you just turn it round like so and then off we go again. Just get in the groove and listen to some cool music. So let's check the front. 
Not bad, not 100%, but it's good enough. So you see here we've got our scallop around the edge and then we've got our inner, inner part. So very simple so far. And you can always, if you're struggling with perpendicular, you can always use the actual plate itself or the edge of the plate to make sure that you're, you're running in, a, in the right direction. So the next thing I want to do is decide what I want to say. If this is going to be a bookmark, we can give it to a friend, for example. Uh, we can write a meaningful word, uh, whatever, you, whatever you fancy. I would suggest that we just take a, we take a, a piece of paper and we write whatever it is that we're going to suggest. So I'm going to write Patience, for example, beautiful girl's name. Also uh, a very, a very important word when it comes to, to uh, parchment craft. So let me see here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We've got eight letters. Um, so I could, for example, I could put two in the middle and then three at the top and three at the bottom. This would be a great way, with a longer word like, say, Elizabeth, for example, or Dominic, this would be a great way now of um, positioning your letters so you start in the centre. Now, always bear in mind, even though you've admired the front, when you turn, you always work from behind. So we're going to use a letterbox on the... You see the letterbox here? We're going to use that letterbox, and I'm going to put those two those two boxes in the middle. So let me just, again, just wipe this with our tumble dryer sheet. And, um, and then I'm gonna use my, my um, embossing tool. Oh, that's, that's good enough. And then I should just put my, my double box in first. And then when I've done my double box, then I'm gonna add my other boxes. This will give, this makes it so easy to, um, to then spell the, the word. So then you see here, I can just hold my tape, decide how I want to position it. Excellent. And I think we're gonna go like so. I think that will look great, like there. And then I'll, now when I'm adding boxes, you see, I've just gotta make sure that I don't go through. So it's like masking when we're stamping, except now, we don't actually have to cover up. We just must make sure that we don't go straight through the letter box with our stylus. There, so now we've got those three in place. You see, and we've avoided going through here. And then we're gonna lift again, and then we're gonna do the top three letters, or the bottom three, whichever way you wanna look at it. So, so now, for example, oh, I can turn it round like so, and I'll add my next three letters there. And you see, if you do it like this, you're going to get great positioning. So again, avoiding going through that, that box there. Right, and then once we've got our boxes in place, it's very easy to then spell out our word or name. There we go. So now I've done that, and again, worked from behind. Nice. So just looking up here, you see, it's easy because this time I'm running from top to bottom. So I haven't got to think about going backwards. But if I was running, uh, if, I, if I were spelling a name here and it was a, a horizontal uh, version, then I would have to start, if it was patience, I'd start with P at the back. So it'd be P, A. Then when you turn it round, you see the P's at the front. But since we're running top to bottom, that's not even hard. This is going to make such a nice present. So you chill and listen to some nice music while I just spell my word out. Thank you. Right, so now we've spelt our name or our word, and the next thing we want to do is decorate this piece here. So this time, I'm going to use this fabulous sprig, which works out beautifully. And all I need to do now is just position the leaves, you see, and still I'm working from behind, and I'm going to give my parchment another dusting with the 
tumble dryer sheet and then I'm going to start just adding my leaves into the background. So I'll see you in a minute. Super. So let's check it out. So now we've got this really nice background. If I show you, if I put this behind a piece of black, then you can really see it coming together. So that will do for the moment. I want to show you a couple of little tricks now. Um, I think we've done enough with the plates. So we'll just put that to one side for a moment. In the starter kit, uh, in the groovy plate starter kit, I think you'll know that there is a mat, and this is um, this is a mat that's got a hard side and a soft side. And you'll notice that I've already taken a baby wipe and I've taken out the center. Um, it wipes away very easily, and um, it's nice because you get the grid around the outside, but you haven't got all the noise behind your work when you're working. So I just want to show you, for example, I'm going to do a little bit of in white work or embossing as they call it now. And, uh, and I think I'll use my, my plate to sandwich my work so that again, I'm working from behind. Okay. And I just want to use my sellotape now. Let me just stick that on there and on there so that I will, it will stick to the groovy plate and I just want to show you what I'm going to do now. If I lean that down on there, you see when I want to check what I'm doing, this is the good part. I can turn it over and I can have a look, you see, but also while I'm working on the embossing work now, the white work, I'm not actually leaning and it doesn't curl, which is all very much better. So two things I want to show you. First of all, let's have a look at this edge here. One of the rules that I've learned, and we can, I can show it to you on the side here because we're going to cut all this out. If you want to make a circle, a little white dot, that's what you don't do because then you get a tiny little dimple in the middle. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up, down, left, right, and then we're going to go round. And that's how we create a dot without a dimple in the middle. So again, I want to put this all the way around here. So I'm going to go up, down, left, right, and then round we go. Up, down, left, right, and round we go. So you can see why I've said patience, can't you? Up, down, left, right, and round we go. It's actually one of the most relaxing, therapeutic things to do that I've ever come across. And you just get in the groove and relax. And what I'm doing here is I'm using the number three tool of the styluses. So we use the number one and the number two for doing the line art. And now we're going to use the number three and the number four for doing the, um, the white work or the embossing as they call it. So again, I'm using the number three on a scale of one being the thinnest and four being the fattest. I'm on number three now and I'm just going round and I make the artwork come to me. See, up, down, left, right, and round we go. Up, down, left, right, and round we go. So just bear with me while I go round and, uh, and I'll see you in a minute. So now let's take a look. You can see what I mean about the, the little dot there, or maybe you can't. But so now we've decorated. See, it looks very, very modern, but it's also very beautiful. Make a great bookmark. Now, the only other thing I want to show you is how to create a little bit of definition in the leaves and perhaps in the letters. Not sure yet. I'll have a look in a moment. So once again, I'm going to turn my, I'm going to turn my, um, 
my work to the back. So I make sure that I'm always working from behind. And then let's just take this leaf, for example. And what I'm going to do is use short feathery strokes. You see, this is soft. We're working on the soft side of the, the, the craft mat. And then I'm going to, I've got choices. I'm going to take number four. This is the fattest of all of them. And then I'm going to use just light feathery strokes, you see. Now, if I use number four, the, the, the largest of the styluses, then I can use, if I want to make it whiter, I can go in over the top of that with number three afterwards. So what I'm doing in theory, this is what I'm learning now from, uh, from my parching friends, is that I am, I'm stretching the parchment with the large tool and then I'm further stretching the parchment with a smaller tool. And that's how you get a lovely a lovely graduation. So let's just take a look at one one f of the leaves. There we go, and you can see exactly what I'm what I'm doing. So I'm just going to take my time now, and I'm going to to um, do this white work and and emboss this every single leaf. Again, patience. There's a reason why I use the word patience. Okay, I'll see you on the other side. Okay, so let's see. This isn't, isn't this lovely? I think it's very pretty, don't you? So the last thing we need to do now is cut this out. Right, now, when we go further down our parchment skills road, then we'll learn how to use an embossing tool and a perforated tool, and then we get that lovely tatty lacy edge. But for me, at the moment, I'm going to settle for cutting out with a good pair of tiny scissors. And what I'm going to try to do is cut in as tightly as I can to this embossed edge. And I'm literally going to go round like this and snip in to the lace edges, you see? So I'm just going to catch that edge and then come round and then just snip in. Patience is what's required here and a very good steady hand. It also helps if you cut away a little bit as you're, as you're doing this, it's easier. So whatever, whichever works for you, you know, I'm going to just enjoy myself as I go around here and uh, I shall see you on the other side. Okay, there we are. Isn't that lovely? So one more little thing that I want to show you, and then we have our first Christmas present ready to go. Uh, this is the soft side. Now let me show you. This is the hard side. And um, apparently, blue is the colour of patience. So I'm going to take my Spectrum Noir pencils, and I'm going to add, I just want to pop this behind because again, we're going to color in from behind. And I want to just check out which blue do I like? I think I may go with that blue. Okay, a nice light blue. And I'm going to just add, let me just show you this. If I add a little bit of blue in to the back of the letters, let's turn it over and have a look. Can you see there's a hint of blue now in the letters? You see, you can build up these Spectrum Noir pencils. They're um, fantastic for working on parchment. Like the Faber-Castell Polychromos, except that they're a fraction of the cost. 
And what we're going to do, you see, is just add feathery strokes. One of the things is because the, the parchment is translucent, even though it looks very bright on this side, when we turn it round, you'll see that it's actually <sighs> muted. If I put this against white, then you'll probably see it better. There, you see how I've just started building up the colour there. So I'm just going to add a little bit of colour here and there. And I'm going with blue because blue is the colour of patience. Okay, so I've used the hard side of the mat to do the colouring. I've used Spectrum Noirs, Polychromos, Faber-Castell, same thing. Uh, and you can see here how wonderful that looks from the front. And then the final finishing touch is all we need is this uh, bookmark uh, sleeves, which were available on our website, of course. And then you just open this up. This is going to make such a lovely present to somebody. And, uh, and then you just slide it in. And, uh, and there we have it. I think this one's going to be for my dad. Uh, so there we are. Very lovely. I want to show you one that my friend gave me, Maria. And this is where I got the inspiration. So you can see here, Maria, she taught me these tricks, you see. And she showed me how to make the back and how to make the front. And all I'm doing now is passing it on. So I hope that you enjoyed that. Uh, I hope that you got something out of it and, uh, and that you find our groovy system as relaxing and, uh, and therapeutic as I certainly do. So um, do go to my blog, barbaragrayblogspot.com, barbaragrayblog.blogspot.com. Uh, tutorials most days, step by steps, and uh, subscribe to this channel. And I shall see you next time. Thanks very much. Bye bye now.